Hey, it's Matt Stevenson, and now coming at you, a bona fide Twitter info sex celebrity. You may know her as 5683 Monkey. I think most people in the real world know you as Zoe Rose. Zoe, you've got a different concern. We've been talking a lot about protecting data, protecting networks, things that are in a place, whereas your concern is with the comms, with people that are actually out in the world doing things that people do. How is that a different concern from the security angle? Well, I think traditionally we view people as they work in one office, they secure that office, and then their network is secure. What we forget uh, is nowadays offices are agile. Uh, people work from home, people work from coffee shops, people go to clients, and one day, you know, you do this awesome work, you have you have to actually send that report to the client. So data is constantly moving and you can't just consider the physical office secure, you also have to consider how do you get that information to the client and how do you let your users uh, work in the life that they live. They don't generally work nine to five anymore and they don't generally work just in one office. And so that, that you, you raise the question I would ask, how do you do that? What is the concern? How can you make sure that people stay efficient, they stay productive, but all of this mobile data is going to be protected and it's going to be something that they can access and use? Um, there's a few things. I mean, another thing that's constantly said is humans are the weakest link in the link, or yeah, the weakest link in the chain. And in my mind, that's not true. Uh, humans can be the weakest link, but they also can be the strongest asset. Um, when, I, when I address a situation, I look at who are the threat actors, what's the data, um, and why, why do I need secure communications, um, or securing whatever. And so I look, at, um, I look at a user, and I bring the risk to them. So users aren't stupid, they just don't care. What my job is, is to get them to care. Um, when nowadays they, they're talking about um, making uh, developers responsible for their insecure code, uh, a lot of companies punish uh, users that click phishing links, for example. But the problem is, maybe that developer doesn't know how to write securely. Maybe that user doesn't know what a phishing email is. They don't understand that they're a target for ransomware. Um, they, in their mind, they're they're not valuable, their computer isn't valuable, it doesn't contain anything of value to them, um, but we all know that's not true. Um, and so what I do is I look at what does the user actually need, what features do they need, um, and what security controls can I put in place, and then how do I make that user care to use them, to retain using that. And I do it through things such as um, when users are traveling and they need a secure travel kit, uh, for example, plugging your phone into anywhere, if you're busy and you're traveling a lot, your phone's going to die pretty fast and you're in a taxi and that taxi has a cable or you're at a conference and that conference has a box that you can plug your phone in and it's secure because you, know, you lock it. But the reality is data can transfer on that phone cable. You don't know what's on the other end. You don't know if anything's polling data. What you can do and what I've done is uh, I'll change the cable color. So I'll say to them, I won't say to them, do not plug your phone in anywhere else. I'll say, use this green cable for your phone and so and it's an ugly color so it reminds them oh I'm gonna plug it oh wait a minute it's not the green cable sometimes when we think about hardware uh, we know that certain hardware has certain power cables and you always use the same one so you don't break it in this case it's also triggering the same thing but also doing it in a different way of color uh, that taxi cab has a white cable that's not the color of the cable I'm allowed to use so yeah the green data only goes through the green cable if we yeah. want to make sure that it's charged so as we continue to evolve and we want to make sure that we are protecting and it's no longer about building the tallest walls and digging the deepest moats, like looking to the future, anything that's catching your eye that either is a specific concern or you can point to and say this is a best practice that hasn't really been adopted yet, but if you, this is really the way that we need to go both culturally and corporately. Um, I think so. I mean, for f I, going back to what I do internally, um, Two examples are um, breaches. A lot of companies have breaches. They're in the news a lot. How do I make the users care? So what I did at my office is I sent around an email saying, there's this website called Have I Been Pwned by Troy Hunt. And I said, this is how you check if your email is on this list or these lists. And one of my users, uh, she checked, and her email's on three lists. And she emailed me back saying, thank you so much for sending me this. I'm on three lists. And um, I always make sure to tell them, you know, generally in that situation, it's kind of unlock of the draw because it's not necessarily your, 
your fault you're on a breach list, uh, but here's the ways to mitigate whatever. And so now she cares, and she actually, uh, she's um, business, business support. Uh, so technically, I mean, why would she care about cybersecurity? But now that she's seen her personal emails on these lists, she keeps on track of cyber news. She'll send me articles every once in a while. She's like, nice. you may have seen this, but this is pretty interesting. Another thing I do is I do um, offensive security. So I not only say users, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, follow this guide every year. What I do is I teach them how to hack. Oh, nice. So I have lawyers, business support, everyone learning how to hack. Uh, they learn about Cali, you know, the pa hackers. OS, you know, and so they, they think it's really cool. To them, it's like, oh man, I cloned this website, I can send out this phishing email, I can... The latest one was looking at how to create ransomware. Um, ethically. Um, <laughs> I'll say that. Hey, it's always more fun to punch a mugger as he's coming at you than it is to get mugged. Well, but, yeah, and so when, it, when I started, it was just this black box. Stuff happens, no idea what you do, no idea how you do it. Cool. Now it's you know, I found, I found this thing online that I think can be used uh, in a phishing email against us, and I'll get it taken down. Oh, you know, I, um, I got this email. It doesn't look right. And I'll look at it, and no, it's not. And through that, we actually stopped quite a bit of ransomware coming into our office. I'm not talking about the one, I'm talking about back <laughs> a few months ago, um, uh, looking at um, ransomware that was delivered through phishing emails. Um, I mean, we get targeted just as anyone else does. Sometimes it's not, it's just general phishing, but sometimes it is actual targeted phishing. And uh, the biggest thing for us is we can have as many technical controls as we want in place, but they can only go so far. At the end of the day, these users need to, one, care, and two, know how to care, know how to look out for the dangers, and know how to protect themselves. Because if we just say, oh, you know, you click that phishing link, you're a bad employee, yeah, exactly. you know, they're just going to be like, well, I don't really care, and I feel bad, and that's not motivating. So instead, I created a program that teaches them why they should care, how they can care, how they can protect themselves both in the office and personally, as well as incentivizing it using uh, intrinsic um, motivators versus extrinsic. So I give them points. So, you know, you do this, you do this, you get a certain amount of points, you get a level, you show up on the internal wiki as being this awesome cyber warrior. Hey, everybody loves a gold star on the wall, no, right? Exactly, and that's what it is. And so I have users now emailing me, be like, you know, I think this is vulnerability. And me saying, you know, actually, you're right, that's awesome. Because they're the cyber defense team, not just me, not just the cyber team. Everyone is the cyber defense team. And if you ignore the majority of your company, you're ignoring assets that yep. could be used to protect you. So you've effectively put your entire employee base to work for you. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. It See, is. that's what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, shameless plug time. What do you got going on? What, what do people need to be aware of that's awesome? Um, passwords are amazing. Uh, they can be confusing. So come to PasswordsCon in December and uh, learn more about them. And one more time to find you on the Twitter is where? 5683monkey. All right. More good stuff coming up. We got lots more. Probably nobody just like Zoe, but we'll hopefully find equal and important information. So stick around.